you're commuting, chilling at home, or just taking a break, we've got you covered with the hottest news, fascinating guests, and the occasional surprise. Buckle up and get ready to get caught up with us. Hello, 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 and welcome to a special edition of the Get Caught Up Podcast. This is what we are calling our GCU Homecoming Spirit Week. Woo! We got to insert us some uh, hand claps and claps and cheers and stuff. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> As per usual, you know who I am. I'm Untamed, and I'm joined with Crystal. Miss Crystal, looks the soul, and as you can see, I love the background. It's catered to our homecoming spirit. Week. So, in the spirit of Spirit Week, <laughs> we yeah, have theme days, and so. This Monday, October 14th, today's theme is the color pink. Because in October, we wear pink. Exactly. So we had to play homage to, for two things, um, for our book. So we picked a book that also has the color pink in it. We are wearing pink, so we want to give, you know, much love to those who are battling breast cancer and support mm -hmm. breast cancer awareness. And also to talk about our books that has the pretty color of pink in them. So my book of choice that I will be discussing is This Could Be Us by Miss Kennedy Ryan. And Kristen, what are you talking about? I'm talking about Waiting on Wendy by Miss Tanzania Glover. Hey. It was rent free in my head, my heart. Oh, I love it. Love it. Yeah, yes. So I as much and I love um book one of the Skyland series because this is actually book two of the Skyland series. And I felt it was appropriate to talk about this one, give it some love because this one is the one that did make the New York Times bestsellers list. <laughs> Congratulations, Cindy. Yes, congratulations. Woo! And because I'm going to go ahead and do my un my unzipping so I can do this, I was fortunate enough. Um, I really, truly wanted to support Kennedy on this press run that she had for This Could Be Us. So I actually ordered the limited edition um, paperback from Barnes and Noble that had the, the raised pink foil on the front. But I gifted that to my publisher, my friend, the Wanda Williams, so we're black out of media because she missed it and she wanted it. So I gifted it to her. But never fear because I also was able to get the This Could Be Us book bow, if you can see it. I hope we can see it. And the back is one of the quotes from the book. I'm a hornet. I can love and I can sing. So that is one of the quotes. And also, I have an autograph a card back. This could be us right here with the artwork. The artwork. So, yeah. Yes, so as you can see, it has the colors of pink and orange mixed in, and that is the official cover for this could be us. Girl, what can I say about this book? Um, now I will say can you tell us about what it's about. I sure can. Then we start there. <laughs> Right, let me start there with the synopsis. So, first of all, this book, I got you, I got you, I got you. I got you, I got you, I got you. I was ready to jump into the book. <laughs> this could be a Soledad Barnes has her life all planned out because, of course, she does. She plans everything, she designs everything, she fixes everything. See, she's a domestic goddess who never met a party she couldn't host or a charge she couldn't do. 
the one with all the answers and the perfect vinaigrette for that summer salad. But none of her varied talents can save her when catastrophe struck. And the life she built with the man who was supposed to be her forever goes poof in a cloud of betrayal and delusion. But there is no time to pout or sulk or even grieve the life she lost. She's too busy keeping a roof over her daughter's head and food on the table. And in the process of saving them all, Soledad rediscovers herself. From the ashes of a life burned to the ground, something bold and new can arise. But then an unlikely man enters the picture, the forbidden one, the one she shouldn't want, but she but can't seem to resist. She's lost it all, but refuses to re re repeat her mistake. Can she trust him? Can she trust herself? After all, she's lost and found. Can she brave enough to make room for what can be? That is This Could Be Us that I stumbled <laughs> I stumbled through that synopsis, I think, because I was still so ready to get into this book. <laughs> but um, book one was Before I Let Go um, in the series, which is more of a, it, it less women's fiction. Well, it is a bit of women's fiction, but it was more of a romantic, um, contemporary romance, I would say. Mm -hmm. This one is more women's fiction with an addition of romantic things, okay? So Soledad, uh, y'all listen, something crazy happened. And her husband, Edward, let's just get this out of here. First of all, Edward is a whole ass, okay? Period. Point blank. Period. So he is a whole ass, all right? And um, he just... His attitude, everything about him sucks. <laughs> everything about him sucks. He is just, he is a the narcissist to the 1,000th degree. And yeah, yeah. Mm. And mm. nothing he does is wrong. Like he, he has no faults, but everything that's falling up, down around him is because of him. So he, but he feels like he has no faults. But anyway, so we're happy to see <laughs> the demise of the marriage for the simple fact of he's just not a good person to Soledad. Right. He's not a good person to their children. Even, but he has this facade, right? That he, so the kids love him, but in the background, he's just not good to them or for them, you know? And he's not good for his wife. Well, anyway. So, so somebody else I know. Girl. Joe, but um, y'all, mm -hmm, Joe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> he just he he. Anyway, so when this catastrophe happened, Soledad basically like not to say she's left to pick up pieces. She because he was the breadwinner, the caretaker. So now she has to figure it out, like so many women do. She has to figure it out. She's got three daughters. She can't let life fall by the wayside because life is falling apart. And so she does with the help of her friends, Yasmin and Hendrix, who are back again. Also, you know, her sisters, Lola and Nayeli, they are they band together and they're just helping her get through all of this stuff with Edward. In the midst of this, the arch nemesis, who is Judah Cross, she has met Judah at this function because Judah worked with her husband. And there was an instant attraction between Judah and her. Judah is already divorced. Um, so in the midst of everything that's going on, so that connects with Judah. Now, Edward has made it clear to anybody who can listen that he hates Judah Cross, right? Because he feels like Judah Cross was the person who helped with his demise, and Judah was not. Um, but like I said again, narcissists blame everybody but themselves. Right. So, and the daughters, one of the daughters, I, Judah Cross, is like the worst person ever in the world because she's the ultimate daddy. So, of course, when Soledad and Judah try to get together, it is they have to contend with that. Um, at first, it's like, <laughs> not we're not gonna say nothing because we don't we don't want to know. 
Due to Oscar has two sons who are autistic on two different spectrums. So then there's that aspect as well. So they have a lot of blended family concerns, you know, going on about how they can actually sustain a relationship while she's trying to rediscover and find out who she is, while she's trying to get through this with her ex-husband and her children, while he has to also continue with his kids, you know? So it is it is one of those things where it is real life and it just smacks you, you know, right in the face with it. And I so absolutely love the fact that Kennedy tackled this in a real life manner. Like she did not gloss over anything. She actually tackled the issues as they came about. And Judah, let me just say this. Judah was like this. Judah was like that guy who was quiet but deaf. And I say it like this. He didn't, he wasn't gonna press her because he understood her situation. But when so he, he was, was very demure. He was very demure. <laughs> very mindful. Very okay. mindful. So like he that. wasn't gonna press her. But what he was gonna do was let his presence be known. Like, hey. I'm not going to press you to be with me, but I'm going to let you know I'm here. And I'm going to be here. And I ain't going <laughs> I, I, I love when I love when authors write a man like that because that just shows you that that man knows what he wants. Not every, like, because sometimes women don't know what they want and they're not ready. And then, like you said, dealing with the type of ex-husband she had, she has to be ready to deal with. First of all, dealing with now being divorced from this man, still raising their three kids and still having to deal with him. And then, you know, because he's the type of man he is, if she goes into another relationship, he's going to be a straight asshole. So yeah. I love the fact that, like you said, she showed in real time. Yes, you guys, I still have not read near one of them. Still have not. I'm going to get yeah, there. what she waiting on, though. But I'm just... Listen, I'm gonna tell you. I mean, right I know now. from my understanding, she's working on book three. Maybe I might just wait till she finished so I can go from one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Okay. Then that's the plan, though. But that's the plan, though. <laughs> oh, you know me. I ain't got time to be sitting here reading waiting. a book and, then, and waiting. Uh -uh. I need all three of them at the same uh -huh. time. So that might be why I'm waiting. That's the plan, though. I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at yep. it. You know, I, I really am not. So. And I think, you know, to, especially if you want to get the relationship of the friends. Now, I will say right. that the, the friendship part of it, it, it was like you embrace friendship, you embrace sisterhood. But I really love the fact that she actually did allow Soledad to focus on herself. You know, right? she she needed that. And so many, so oftentimes we need that and we don't do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So she highlighted Solo that actually focusing on herself and incongruent to actually being, you know, the mother that she needed to be. And she can have all the answers and she have everything right, you know, and, and I appreciate that too. It's like, hey, I'm feeling my way through this too. And that was one of the things she basically had, like, let her go and go, like, hey, we all in this go. <laughs> We're, right. We all feeling our way through, but I'm, um, you know, she she tried her best and she did her best and you know what she came out but <laughs> she came yeah, out and I love it but let me tell I told y'all one quote from the book that was actually on the back of the book but I think that's one of Kennedy's favorite quotes um it was actually from a letter I think that her grandmother had written it, it, and it's some backstory too because her grandmother her grandparents had um she her grandmother had a love in her life that I think she couldn't be with and it was some letters that she was reading and so she was finding out more about her grandmother through those letters so it was one of the quotes through there so it was very very nice but my favorite quote and I said this in my book review chapter 41 is one of the best pieces of literary fiction I have ever read like this whole book is good but there was something special about chapter 41 and this was one of my favorite quotes. She, this is a moment where um, Soledad is having a conversation with her sisters, Lola and Nayeli. And Lola is this just free spirit. So it was on her mind. And, you know, she, she 
appears to be like the wild child of the sisters. But baby, she says, when are we ever done working on ourselves? I believe wholeness is not a destination, but a lifetime process. Something that instead of waiting for, you could be living for. That is so true because you're right. When do we start working on ourselves? You know, we it's not a race, it's a marathon, it's a journey. I like the word journey versus marathon because a marathon it eventually ends. Journeys don't have to end. Exactly. And then a journey can be forever if it needs to be. And, and that that same says a lot. And sometimes too, I, I this is why I saw I like the word journey instead of marathon. Marathon um, is like a competition, and mm -hmm. it can be grueling and challenging, and the reward of it is at the end. Well, a journey isn't necessarily grueling all the time. Sometimes right. you have good days, and sometimes you do have bad days. You have ups, you have downs, but your reward you see going through. Like You can appreciate the actual path along the way in a journey where you might not get that in America. And guess what? A journey, you can do it by yourself. That part. Yes, I just thought about it. I was like, oh, you can also do a journey by yourself. I mean, it's good to do it with other people, but only if you guys are working on the same thing. But if you need to work on that journey by yourself, it is okay to do it by yourself. And, and how often times in life do we have to walk journey by ourselves? Because we, we have our own our own lot of life. Like, yes, you're you're a woman, you're you may be a wife, you may be a mother, you may be a boss, you may, you know, whatever it is that your responsibility to outside of yourself, you may have that. But individually you have your own lot. Like you have to travel your own path for the inner you, you know? Right. So you have your own individual journey and and, and it's several journeys at one time. You know, it but is. you don't have to have your own journey for yourself so that you can know and be at one with who you are, you know, and be confident. So I love the book. That's the concept of the book. Again, the book is This Could Be Us. That is the color pink, referring the color pink for this Monday Spirit Week. And so, girl, let's get into waiting on Wendy. <laughs> okay, so can I just say this, and I love this book so much, but I don't know why I want to keep on calling it Wednesday. I don't know, but look, I know it's Wendy. Look, it, it, it is fine, because I'm with you on that. Like, I, <laughs> something needs to stick, right? And I'm giving you an example. So anybody who comes out with a, a book that starts with the word maybe, I'm going to call it maybe next time or something like that because of CCJ. I don't care what your book is. It's going to be maybe whatever the CC, CCJ. Yeah. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. It's like you, certain things stick, but this book lives in my head rent free. I, I Anytime I have a chance to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it. So let me go ahead and give you the synopsis before I get into it. So, <clears throat> Love is a dish best served unconditionally. What would you do if you had six months left to live? Initially, Kellen Turner plans to live as normally as possible, then go peacefully into the night. But when his longtime crush waitress, Wendy Bell, finally works up the nerve to ask him out, he realizes that he may that he just may have something to live and fight for after all. <clears throat> Okay, so like I said, you guys, this book lives in my head with rent free. Now, the thing is, I love love. And to have it unconditionally is the best thing in the world. And um, I would just say this. So uh, reasonable, look, uh, reasonable Doubt that comes on Hulu. Um, they're going through the two, the main female character and her husband are actually going through um, counseling, couples counseling. And the therapist said to her that you don't know what um, unconditional love is. And she was like, I do. He was like, no, you don't because you never had it. So we might think we know what it is, but if we did not ever have it, we wouldn't know. To say that is 
because I feel like that was Wendy. You know, Wendy had to fight to basically survive. So she's a waitress at a diner that has been in her family for years. Her uncle's running it. And her goal in life is to own that diner. So when she finds out that her uncle's talking about retiring and she wants to buy the diner, you know, she's working her butt off to save to get this. So then this gorgeous man come in, <clears throat> which is Kellen Turner, and he orders food. They strike up this beautiful conversation. And the way Tanzania wrote the conversation is like, damn, I love him. It was just, it was simple, but it was just so sweet and so beautiful. And it's just like, damn, I love him. You know what I'm saying? So it went through him always showing up to the point that she knew what he already wanted to order. So he would come every day at the same time. She would have his food together. They would kiki ha ha, get to know each other more. It was just nice to see. And then one night it's, you want to go out? And yeah, sure. Let's go out. Oh. I was like, are you crying? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm about to say, there's no crying during homecoming spirit week. spending time with each other outside of the diner. Like I said, just getting to know each other. And then Kelly has like a little secret and it's a health issue. It's a health concern that can, that was basically terminal. And oh man, like I finally find, you know, Wendy says, I finally find someone that I love that I want to be with and he might not be here anymore. Wow. But you know what? Kellen is just living for the day. So, you know, I'm just kind of summarizing this up real fast. They decide to, let's go ahead and be together. You know, you live in, let me be with you for your last days, you be with me. Mm. So she ended up getting enough money where she bought the diner. So now this is her business. This is her focus. And she didn't realize how much of a trouble it was in because her uncle never really shared with her. So, mm. you know, just getting it back to where it needs to be. He was there for her for that. And she was there for him when she found out what his health concern was. That became a big issue between them because he just wanted to say, okay, forget it. Just let me go. And she's like, no, I need you to fight. And he was like, no, I don't want to. So, yes, it was just so beautiful. But then something unexpected happened. And that left Wendy to make the decision of what to do. And, of course, that's her man. She loved that man. She fighting for that man. And that man got something to fight for that he just don't know about yet. So she made that ultimate decision and said, save him. Save my man. Save him. You want to save him. He's a good man, Savannah. Good man. <laughs> See, I don't know if I believe her anymore now that we older and we realize why she said he was a good man. I don't believe that no more. The same you have to good. apply that to real good men, though. That's, that's yeah, the game. We got to... <laughs> Yeah, we can't apply to the, the man with the deep voice that be doing those commercials for years that we was in love with. But, um, yeah, he a good man, Savannah. He a good man, Wendy. So save your man. And when she saved him, he was upset. He was hurt because that's not what he wanted. But it gave them a new start. Mm -hmm. A new start in life and love and business. And a beautiful little person that they created so waiting on wendy i love it tanzania i love this story you know i love this story and like i said anytime i get a chance to talk about it i'm gonna do it. like i literally tried to find a pink shirt to match the cover that's how much i love this shirt i'm i ain't nowhere near close but i'm wearing pink but it's i don't know what it is about this story and i think uh, i don't know i still like i'm gonna figure it out because I love it, but mm. it's just what's beautiful. I mean, the characters were beautiful. Now, y'all have to go on her webs, I mean, her IG page, because she didn't put, like, pictures of people who she thinks fits these characters, and they are spot on. I mean, 
I love the picture where she has the lady land on the man in the car in the back. You know, they went for this beautiful long drive. How bomb is it to just be in a car with no care in the world, holding on to your man's hand, taking a drive? That's yeah. love. That is Those love. are the moments, though. Those the are the moments. Things, and I think that's what it was with this story. I'm big, you know, I was in a relationship, and it was always the little things that he did that made me say, damn, okay. So it's, it's little things. Like, I think we all need to take a step back and say it's the little things. I bet you if you take a step back and say, what was it that made me fall in love with him that continues to fall in love with him, it's going to probably be the smallest things. The smallest thing. It's the little things. It's, it's the a- little things. It's I'm trying to it, it, it really they add up like um they definitely do and and you'll you'll realize it and you'll know it without knowing it so like knowing. Yep. that's just like every every night um my my husband he always like puts his arm around my waist well Aww. when his shoulder started hurting he couldn't do it and I couldn't sleep and I realized why it was because I got accustomed to having him like being cocooned. As it was my yep. safe space, it was the, the, how I could calm you know myself down. And that little thing, that little thing. And so, likewise, my husband came home yesterday, he was upset with the job and some other stuff that was going on. He was just he was just 38, and I was just like. <laughs> calm down you know and i kept trying to tell him to calm down and he was still kind of in an uproar and i just walked up to him and i like brushed his face like this and he laughed and he was like you know what we used to do that all the time back in the day uh-huh. and he was like and i didn't realize that you did haven't done that in a long time until now and he was like and now i'm laughing and i'm mad so i'm laughing because Automatically, he calmed like he was cool after that. Like, and calm down just, just that like little, that. That little thing, <clears throat> it's the little thing, it's the little, thing. It's the little uh, things. And you know, I'm sitting here because I have my quote, and you know, it disappeared. But I'm gonna tell you, this is just how much I love this book because I remember exactly what the quote said. And this was from Kellen. Okay, he said to her. You think I was coming in here every day for your dry toast? Your dry toast? It has always been you, Wendy. Not no oh, dry Wendy. toast. <laughs> Nobody want no dry toast for your you dry know? toast. And he said, "Not for your dry toast." And and I just found it. And like I said, he said, "You think I came to the diner every day for your for like and dry toast? It was always about loving you." Oh. He didn't just like you, girl. He loved you. He had to eat your dry as toast. <laughs> I know your toast was dry. He got to love you. How you well, cooking your toast dry? Maybe she, she, ain't, she ain't buttery enough. She ain't put no me, butter on it. She said she was butter. He, that's why that toast was dry. <laughs> she, he got the honey butter. That's what he ended up getting. He ain't get just butter. He got honey butter. He got, he got honey butter. butter. No, yeah, I have he got the good butter. Well, so, I, go ahead. Go ahead. This, this was the good book for Spirit Week for Pink. You know, I don't have the actual book. I have to put it. Uh oh. Oh, and it's killing me that I can't purchase the books the way I want to. But just know, when I when I do purchase them again, I'm getting it. Because I need it on my shelf. And I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> well, I also, listen, I, I, I really love Kennedy with this book. Because, girl, I also purchased the audio book. So that's actually, I got the paperback, this beautiful hardcover, and all of this stuff. But I actually listened to it. And it was narrated by, of course, the one and only Jacoby GM. And <laughs> Inez D. Costello. So, that were the two narrators for um this could be us and who narrated wait no way I, I i know but i'm gonna let you wait no wendy was actually wesley siobhan and um i have not I, no i did did i listen to it i did listen to it i did listen to it and 
phenomenal as always. She she did the whole book to herself, you know, her, her and Rashad. Rashad, Rashad, Rashad Shabon and Winston Shabon. Yes, yes, yes. Rashad <laughs> helped her with this book. But no, I definitely loved it, loved it, loved it. You know, I said now I've become a audible girl, and you know, I just said to Untame early, I was like, oh, I can't wait. Like y'all, I know we kind of off. But it, we'll talk about this more when we get to that day. But Sherelle the Green got us in the choke hole. She still got uh, us in the choke A deep one. A deep one. A deep one. Like, and we talked about this earlier. And it's one of her books. I'm like, should I go ahead and read it? Because I want to read it so bad. But I want to be it on. I want to listen to it on Audible. Like, that's how bad it is now. So, but we'll talk about that more when we get later on in the week. But the Spirit Week is spirited already. I'm loving it. I'm here. I love it. it. I love it. So today yeah. is our color pink. Please make sure that you go out and you purchase this to be us and waiting on Wendy. Um, yes. these two books are phenomenal. Um, I think you have to get waiting on Wendy from Tanzania's actual personal website. Yes, you do. Yes. And, okay. But you can get This Could Be Us. It's available everywhere books are sold. Um, also in paperback, hardcover, and on um, audiobook. Now, this beautiful book, bow, they were limited. So, <laughs> I, know, I was like, oh, I want one. And the funny thing about it, I got the book, I got the audible. I don't have the bow. But that's okay. So, Maybe she okay. might be on sale again. Yeah. She, she, I, I fully believe that um, these may go back on sale again with her. You know, I don't see it. I see her not doing it. Even if she doesn't do it with this again, she probably will do it with the third book that's coming up, something similar. So just be yes. on the lookout. So, yes. But that is day one of our series. Yay! So we're going to close it on out here, y'all. Come back and tune in again with us again for day two, which is Pajama Day. And two new books. And two new books. Hey! Thanks for getting caught up with the Get Caught Up Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe on Spotify, iTunes, or iHeartRadio, and leave us a review. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Get Caught Up Podcast, and let us know what you think about the show. See you in the next episode.